today I'm going to try my hand at soldering some wire. <laughs> so this here is some uh, wire that I got at the local hardware store. So I came, I believe there's seven strands in it, and each strand is about 12 gauge. So it's, uh, it's fairly thick, but uh, it's um, not impossible to bend. And here's some ideas that I kind of came up with for things that I could make out of this copper wire. But for now, I'm just going to try my hand at a little shelf that's inspired by my one of my last videos. Uh, I bought a shelf at the garage sale and I really liked it. It was painted dark green and I ended up uh, redoing it up in white. So I liked it enough that I want to try and replicate it. So let's get busy doing that. <laughs> So here are the pieces that I cut and kind of curled up and uh, tried to uh, put together to make this shelf. And the little coil there, that is the solder. So you can see in the background, there's a chair design that I have and a bench design that I have. So um, this is the first design for the shelf. And you can see I kind of tried to, well, I, I did the one side and then I made the other side to mirror it. So that was kind of the idea. And so I've got it laying here on the fireproof brick, which is where I'm going to do the soldering. And uh, here I am, my first go at it. So I applied flux to the metal, and then I'm using this tiny little soldering iron, which I have to say, um, when I make the next bit of furniture, I'm never going to use the soldering iron again. So this soldering iron is only a 30 volt soldering iron. And I do have a really large one that I use for stained glass that heats up much higher heat and uh, works a lot more efficiently. So um, I actually ended up having to enlist the help of my husband in order to complete this project. So you can see here, I've got it all soldered together. And that's the back part of the shelf. I think it looks not too bad. You'll see at the end that it looks a lot better than what I thought it would turn out. So that's the little tiny soldering iron, the little 30 volt one. And then on the right there, that's the flux that I used. So flux is really a must if you're soldering any kind of metal, the flux cleans it. So you can see here, I've got the little clips out and oh yeah. <laughs> Not as easy a job as one might think. So I think my husband was kind of, he was holding the camera and getting a little frustrated with me because I just could not make it work. So he came up with this marvelous idea of taping it to the side of the brick. And wow, that worked. <laughs> So um, some people have those, what they call the magic hands. So they're little clips that you can use to hold things. And they are very handy when you're doing soldering. Unfortunately, I don't have a pair of those. I used to have a pair. I just absolutely have no idea where they are. So you can see here, Ken is doing a great job at assisting me with the soldering. And there you go. That's exactly what I needed done. So he's a handy kind of guy. So, and there we go. We've got the other side done as well. I think that looks pretty good. So now um, I made, uh, I didn't make a full square, so I have to solder the two ends here so that it's got a shelf end on both ends. There you go. Ken's assisting me to put some solder on there. Now it's quite sturdy. As you can see, he's able to lift it up and uh, align the very last part of the shelf to square it off. 
So we just got to apply a little bit more flux to it. And once again, I can't stress how important it is if you're going to try this yourself. You have to put flux on the joints. Otherwise, the solder does not stick at all. So, um, so he's just going to go in and heat it up. And that smoke that's coming off of it, I don't know if that's toxic or not, but I prefer to do this type of work outside. I have two parrots in the house, and birds have such sensitive lungs, I don't want to expose them to any of the unnecessary toxins. So, And I cut an extra piece of copper to put in the center just to stabilize the... Uh, the shelf so you can see here once again he's putting a little bit of flux on each one of the joints and then we're going to go ahead and uh, solder that extra little piece in so I know it doesn't look pretty at this point but wait till you see what it looks like the finished product it actually turns out pretty cute I'm actually pretty stinking proud of this little project. <laughs> and thank you so much, honey, for helping me. He's such a good guy, so patient with me, considering I've always got all my miniature junk all over the place when I'm crafting. He uh, has much patience with me, which is really great. Not everybody has that. So there you go. He's just soldered that in for me. And uh, voila. You can see, looks pretty good. So he's just going back in. So I didn't make that perfectly square. So I actually cut it off. And he's just going in and re-soldering that corner joint just to make it square for me. Well, you can see here, this is what it looks like all soldered together. Um, it's not very pretty with all of the solder mark all over it, but uh, wait till you see what I do with it. So I'm going to have to take it inside and scrub it really, really well with uh, a scrub brush and some dish soap. And then I brought it back outside. And I've got some black satin automotive trim coating. So I know that's a, a strange choice, but that's what I always use for an undercoat on everything. Uh, main reason, it dries almost immediately and it will stick to nearly anything. It's just really a great little product. So I'm just, as you can see, covering it. Let it dry for a little bit, then I turned it over and going to spray the back of it. So. There you go. So now it's uh, been sprayed on both sides. I'm just going to let it sit outside to cure for an hour or so. In the meantime, I went down in the basement and I took three popsicle sticks and glued them together and then painted them with burnt umber paint. Um, three popsicle sticks was slightly too wide. So I took out my square and my X-Acto knife and I cut off the excess so that it's going to fit properly. And so there you go. I brought out the um, Rust-Oleum. <laughs> I really like this. This is like such a nice high gloss product. So, uh, so it's a clear high gloss lacquer. So I'm just uh, spraying both the metal part as well as the wood part in the high gloss. And it's going to have to sit outside to cure for quite a while before I can turn it over and do the other side. So, but uh, as you can see, I've covered it pretty well. I always like to move it off of the spot where I've sprayed it just so it doesn't stick to the paper towel. So it's looking pretty good so far. It's had a chance to dry in the sun for several hours. You can see here, that's the side that I did not put the varathane on. And that's the side that has the varathane. So you can see here, I've got some of my tacky glue out and I'm just going to put tacky glue onto my little shelf uh, so that I can glue the wood onto it. So um, it's hard again to hold the camera. So, <laughs> oh, there you go. So I've got all of the glue onto it and uh, I'm just ready to put the shelf part on. 
I know my uh, wood pieces, my popsicle sticks are not totally even. I did that on purpose because I want it to look really rustic. So I want it to look like it's wrought iron with rustic wood on top of it. So there you go, I've got it finished. I'm actually pretty proud of this piece considering it's my first hurrah at trying to uh, do anything with copper wire. So, um, and it's not a bad replica of the shelf that I did the other day that I got at the garage sale. So it's, I'm pretty pleased with it and it's gonna hold a lot of miniatures. So, well, thank you very much for joining me today. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button. Um, by subscribing, you really help my channel. Okay, well, thank you very much again and have the best day ever. And please tell your friends about my channel.